Hey guys, it's Katie, and today I'm gonna to share a little bit more about my hypothyroidism. So if you guys saw the story I posted about my hypothyroidism a few months ago, you know this is something I've been dealing with for years. I have tried tons of different diets, tons of different supplements, all the medications. It takes a while to figure it out, but I've learned so much, and a lot of you are asking for more details on like the foods I do and don't eat, the medications I take, so I wanted to share that with you because really nutrition has made the absolute biggest impact on my overall health, being good on the inside, feeling good, and really just allowing me to get rid of some of those symptoms and side effects that I dealt with for such a long time. All right, so if you haven't seen my first video or you're just not sure about hypothyroidism, real quick of it, hypothyroidism basically is just an underactive thyroid. So your thyroid gland is like right in this area and it essentially regulates most everything important in your body, your metabolism, your digestion, your, mu your, mood, your mood, your immunity, it kind of controls it all. So if you have hypothyroidism, it means you have an underactive thyroid, you're not producing enough of that hormone to help regulate all those things, which means some of the symptoms you can have are fatigue, like you're tired all the time, you can have hair falling out, really dry skin, weight gain, really hard to lose weight, um, you get sick all the time, so poor immunity, poor digestion, constipation, all the bad stuff, we don't like it. Um, so there's lots of different things that are used to treat hypothyroidism. It can be medication, but for me, like I said, the biggest thing has been my nutrition. Um, I do take medication still as well. I've tried going full nutrition route, and while that definitely is super impactful, my body still needs the medication. So I take two different types for the T4 and T3, which are two different hormone glands. Um, I take a levothyroxine as 100 micrograms, and then I take 15 micrograms of Cytomel. So it helps regulate both of those thyroid hormones that I'm able to function better. So a little funny story though, um, I just, this literally happened like last week. I've been feeling really fatigued, really tired, was having like some weird symptoms that I haven't really had for a couple of months. And I was like, what is going on? This is so weird. And the Cytomel, one of the pills I take, I cut in half because it's a larger dosage and I only need half of it. So I like chop it in half all the time. Well, I found out that I had actually accidentally chopped my um, Claritin, like for your allergies, in half instead. So for about three weeks, I was taking half a Claritin instead of half of my thyroid medication. And oh my gosh, it was rough. Um, now that I've been taking my thyroid medication again, like normal, I feel normal and regulated, but it's crazy what a huge impact it has. And I think the only reason that I like was still functioning, still able to work out and everything was because of my nutrition and the things that I was eating to help really give my body that energy so I could still feel good. There are definitely foods that make me feel better and ones that make me feel a little bit worse and more fatigued because it's really hard for your body to digest certain foods with hypothyroidism. So in general, I'm gonna share some of the ones that are good to avoid, but everyone's body is a little bit different. So you kinda of have to test it out on yourself and like listen to your body, see how it feels, but I'm gonna show you what I eat and what I don't to help with this hypo. And if you guys are dealing with hypothyroidism or some of these symptoms, especially ones like the weight gain and feeling like all of those physical symptoms are just like there and they're never gonna go away, I promise you, you can make changes. I was 45 pounds overweight and thought that's just how it was gonna be forever because of my hypothyroidism, and it's not the case. I was able to lose the weight and keep it off, and really most of that came down to these nutritional tips I'm gonna share with you right now. So if you're dealing with hypothyroidism or some of the symptoms at any level, it can kind of feel like it's all very physical, like the weight gain, the hair falling out, your skin being dry, your immune system even, when you're getting sick all the time, but really everything starts on the inside and it really starts with the gut. Your gut helps regulate your hormones, your digestive health, your immunity, everything starts there, which is why nutrition is so hugely important. So one of the number one most important things that I always do, I've always done this, is taking a probiotic, because probiotics really help build immunity in your system, they help with your gut, your digestion, all of those main things that you need to have like a healthy foundation in your gut first. So I take the Culturel probiotics, this one is a ProWell. They have a ton of different types, one specifically for women even, and it's really exciting because I've been using Culturel for years and they wanted to partner on this video so that I could share even more of these tips with you guys to really help 
get your gut healthy, feel good on the inside, and deal with all these hypo symptoms. Probiotics really are gonna help balance all of the healthy bacteria in your gut, so bacteria can definitely be a good thing, and you wanna make sure you have plenty of good ones in your gut so that you can really have more of a boosted immune system and so that you can absorb all the nutrients you're getting from your healthy diet. So besides taking a supplement like this Culturelle, I also eat foods that have a lot of probiotics in them. So Greek yogurt is a really, really awesome way to get healthy probiotics, plus you get your protein and everything else that you need. Um, you'll see that in the Hot Body Meal Plan a lot. So Greek yogurt and goat's milk yogurt for me are like my go-tos. Kefir, anything like, um, what is it called? You know, the cabbage sauerkraut there it is I knew I had it in me those are gonna really help increase all of your nutrients in your body they're gonna help decrease inflammation which is another side effect if you're dealing with hypothyroidism you can feel really puffy really bloated and inflamed so all of the probiotics you'll get in those foods are gonna help with that so much getting plenty of healthy fats are also a really important part of my diet because it helps balancing your hormones which if you have hypo can be like this you can sometimes feel like a look bit of a crazy person so healthy fats balance those hormones they help with brain function they also are gonna have all those omega-3 so things like salmon nut butter Butters, there's like some peanut butter, coconut oils, and they will help decrease inflammation, which again is really important. All right, so also things like chia seeds, sprouted grains, um, all of your veggies, you wanna get plenty of fiber to help with that digestion. They also have omega-3, especially in chia seeds to get you. Um, the sprouted bread is a lot easier to digest, so a lot of times gluten can be really hard on the body if you have hypothyroidism. So the sprouted grain, your body's able to process and digest a little bit more. It's gonna have also effects that are gonna help balance out your blood sugar levels, which is really important, and those hormones again. And then when it comes to veggies, there are some definite no-nos in hypothyroidism land because it's really hard for your body to digest certain things. So the ones that I stick to, the ones I like to eat plenty of, are things like asparagus, um, a lot of spinach, you need that iron, iodine, different things from those vegetables to really help your body and your thyroid function more properly. And you wanna make sure you're able to absorb the iodine, um, which again is really important for that thyroid function. The veggies that I do not eat very often, and if I do, the thing that's really important to keep in mind is to make sure that you are steaming or cooking them for like at least 30 minutes because you need them to be very, very, very well cooked in order for your body to digest them better. And it's really sad because they're some of my favorite vegetables, but those are, I always mess this word up, cruciferous vegetables. Um, things like kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. I love all these veggies, but you guys, with hypo, they are really hard on your body. So you can enjoy them for sure. Just make sure you're cooking them for at least that 30 minutes so that you're able to digest them a little bit more easily. And when you can, try to stick to more of the asparagus, the spinach, zucchinis. Those are gonna be a lot easier for your body. They're softer ones, not as fibrous. And that can be the tricky thing. You need fiber, but you don't want too much or it can be hard on the body. All right, so two more things that are really random, but you should definitely try to avoid them if you can when you have hypothyroidism. And the first one is tap water. I know, it seems so random. You're like, it's water, why is it a big deal? But water has chlorine and fluorine, and those two things block the absor absorption of iodine, which your body needs for thyroid function. So if you can get better filtered water, that's how you wanna go. And the second one is sugar. So whether you are dealing with hypothyroidism, you're just trying to lose weight, or you just wanna feel better, you have to ditch the sugar. Sugar messes with your hormones. It can make you feel all over the place, be really moody. It of course increases weight gain because they're empty calories. It has no nutrients to offer your body and it's just all around bad. So just get rid of that sugar as much as you can. Any processed sugar out, limit any sugars that you're getting, even honeys which definitely have more nutrients to them. The more sugar, the harder time your thyroid is going to have functioning. So if you can ditch it, the better you'll function and the more weight you'll be able to lose. All right, so I'm gonna quickly show you guys kind of what my morning breakfast routine looks like with hypothyroidism so you can see the foods that I'm eating and hopefully make some changes to your diet too. All right, so first thing in the morning, I obviously take my medication, so I'll get that in. And then when you have hypothyroidism and you're taking medication, you need to wait about 45 minutes to an hour before eating food. So I take it first thing in the morning, then I wait a little bit, I'll drink some water and all of that. And then the first thing I do after that is take my apple cider vinegar, which you guys know, this really, for me personally, just helps kickstart my digestion, makes me feel good, and just starts my day. It's a little bit rough, add water before you take it if you're gonna take it. And then I take my probiotic, 
so I get all of my like goodness happening to set my day first so my gut is good to go. After that, I'll make my coffee. So I'm gonna show you just quickly what I put in my coffee to help kind of fuel my morning. And I usually will do, I mix it up sometimes, but a little coffee in here, whoop. Just a shot of espresso. So I'll do a little bit of almond milk, unsweetened almond milk, because again, we don't want those sugars. And then I'll either use um, like the collagen creamer with coconut milk, which is usually my go-to, um, or I'll just put some straight coconut oil in there about a tablespoon either way. This one's kind of hard. So if I do that, then I'll just add about two scoops. So this way I am getting um, that nice collagen, which is so amazing, especially for gut health, which again, it all starts in the gut. Got to get it good in there. Um, and then you have the healthy fats from the coconut, which are going to help balance your mood, balance your hormones, and just help your thyroid function first thing in the day. So I have those. I'll drink my coffee. And then I do a lot of eggs, but sometimes I'm just not feeling eggs. So my second go-to breakfast is yogurt. I've been doing this. Um, it's basically Greek yogurt, but it's goat's milk yogurt. Same, same real Greek yogurt should be like with goat's milk, plain non-fat. So I get all of those probiotics on top of the culturelle that I'm already taking. So I'll do about a cup of this. And the great thing about Greek yogurt is it's super high in protein, but if you get the plain, it's like really, really, really low in sugar, which is what you want. So I got my plain yogurt in there. And then I'll drop some chia. About a tablespoon. Chia is really good, even if you don't have hypothyroidism, because um, it has those omega-3s, which are just awesome for everyone. And they kind of help pull and detox the body, because they are like little like gelatinous capsules inside your body. And then I'll top it with about a tablespoon of peanut butter or almond butter or some type of butter and mix that all up. And then I got some healthy fats, tons of protein, and some healthy carbs with those chia seeds as well. Everything you need to fuel your morning. All right, so those are a bunch of the foods that I love to eat every single day that are really gonna help increase your metabolism. They're gonna help heal your gut from the inside, increase your immunity, balance out your hormone levels, your blood sugar levels, and just make you feel good. And again, the main ones to watch out for are those cruciferous vegetables, avoid tap water, definitely avoid sugar, and for a lot of people that gluten can be tough. So try to stick to those sprouted grains and you'll be so much better off. I'm gonna put a link below for the culturelle for you guys. Probiotics are so important and I know sometimes those foods like yogurt and sauerkraut are not everyone's jam so this is definitely the way to go to make sure you're getting plenty of healthy probiotics to help your gut health help you be good and feel good and deal with this hypothyroidism if you have more questions comment below and let me know i want to keep making these videos for you so i can help you guys out if you feel like you have any of those symptoms of hypothyroidism definitely go check with your doctor and if you haven't watched it yet check out my first video with my whole hypothyroidism story to get even more deets about it and don't forget, good things come to those who sweat. So I'll see you guys next week for another awesome workout. Bye.